Sharps Off Sports. What is up, fight fans? It is Jack Gotzel, joined by Frank Bonata, and we are going to be talking some MMA today with the Tarps Off UK second episode. We're going to kick it off with some PFL action here. There was a very controversial uh, stoppage in the Werdum versus uh, Ferreira fight. Uh, Ferreira looks like he tapped, and then, you know... Keith Peterson was on the wrong side of the, the choke, so he didn't see the tap. We're doing what's off the gas. Ferreira knocks him out, but now that has been ruled a no contest. And Keith Peterson did write a letter and say that if he had seen the tap, he would have stopped the fight, which definitely helped them move it to a no contest. But unfortunately for Werdum, he still only gets one point because a no contest is one point in PFL instead of getting the... Uh, the stoppage points and, and ending up with the five, I believe, or no, it would have been six points there. He ends up with one. What were your thoughts on that? I think it's fair enough because Ferreira technically still got the finish. You know, they, they, they still awarded him the win in that. So like it's there. I mean, it was a complete Brazilian tap, a, a classic reach around to the far shoulder away from the referee's line of vision and sort of tap once. And, Again, um, to the point where it almost, you know, you could maybe say that it wasn't a tap. It clearly was. But, like, I feel like there's enough, like, sort of hesitation and, and you know, a bit of savvy there from Ferreira that, that you could debatably make the argument. But, no, he 100% tapped out. Um, uh, to be honest, Vadim will be annoyed at um, not getting the whole six points. But we see those sort of um, fights turned around so rarely um, that I think the fact that he um, he got anything out of it at all is, you know, a big win for him. So, yeah, I mean, good work by Ali Abdel- Abdelaziz. Um, you know, I think he said he was working the whole weekend trying to get it overturned, and, and he managed to do it, and rightly so. Yeah, I would have liked to see them like, you know, at least the PFL, I know that the commission can't make it a win, but I would have liked to see the PFL overturn it, but that's not going to happen. He is going to get just one point, but I would think that we're doomed still ends up in that playoff picture when everything is all said and done. And he's going to have his chance to control his own destiny and fight his way there. And another person that looks like they're going to be winning the title in PFL is Kayla Harrison. That was just an absolute dominant performance. She came out and just started throwing right away. She was looking to make a statement. I know some people were saying that this was going to be a tough opponent with her facing a, a bigger girl, but it it was nothing for her. Kayla Harrison made that look easy. Does anybody stop her in PFL? Uh, no. Does anyone stop her full stop? Uh, I mean, she is right now a lightweight. Uh, I know she's spoken about cutting down possibly to 145 in the future to maybe fake news Nunes and they are both training partners over at uh, ATT but you know that's the fight to make that's the only sort of competition I see Kayla Harrison Harrison having just full stop she she's such a powerful formidable opponent um there's no one in PFL who could challenge her I think, well I almost would would like to see Shevchenko come up in weight in in welcome Kayla Harrison in and then if she beats Shevchenko then give her Nunes I'm just thinking you then you get two great fights instead of just one no because then Harrison would have to cut down to bantamweight surely and I don't know if well, she no, could do I, that. I think uh Shevchenko would have to come up and wait like she did the last time she fought Amanda Nunes yeah but she came up to bantamweight to fight Nunes oh then... so is that that's only 155 or no that would um, be 135 right 35 yeah yeah 35 so okay to come yeah. all the way up to 45 and there's yeah, no I, way I mean, I'd love to see it. yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean maybe not maybe not maybe just go with the nunez versus uh harrison in that case i was a it's little a mistaken steep, on the weight there yeah it's a steep step up in competition though nunez you know from from the opposition that she's been fighting at pfl uh, and even even the other female fighters at 145 in the ufc there's no one on Nunes's level, but I'd probably argue there's no one on Harrison's level either. Um, yeah, two-time tough, Olympic uh, gold medal judo, so that's mm-hmm. tough to compete with. And then, like, I mean, 
Nunez is is probably the goat in women's MMA. She's probably the greatest of all time. She's she's gone through Rousey, Cyborg, basically everybody that you could even put into that conversation. So I mean, that's a steep climb for Harrison, but she wants to be remembered as the greatest of all time. She talked on the Ariel Hawani podcast about loving PFL and loving the system. However, like she wants to fight the best competition. So if they can't get competition for her, she would probably move on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't see that. Well, what is there? Uh, potentially Clarissa Shields. Um, yeah. that, that's the big one, isn't it? That's yeah, we have. Well, she's coming over from boxing. Finally, finally, a boxer is coming into MMA. I do actually wish her the best. I know it might be a little bit of a bad look for MMA if the boxer does come in and win because the MMA guys that have gone over to boxing, it has not gone well. Mm. We don't need to talk about Ben Askren or the Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> Conor McGregor, but it's not been good for MMA fighters going to boxing. And now we get the chance to see a real fight because I know we had that fight back in the day at what was that like UFC one where you had uh, Tony fighting. Oh, who was that fight in uh, where the box? I think it was James Tony came oh, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that one you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so names, yeah. So that that wasn't really an MMA versus boxing fight. That was kind of more just like. Uh, the boxers didn't even know what MMA was and they, they learned a lesson. This is going to be a lot more of a competitive fight. I think Carissa Shields has really trained for this. I think she's put in the time she's put in the work. I think she's become an actual mixed martial artist and not just a boxer, but we'll find out. Yeah. She's up there training. I think at Jackson wink with, um, yep. Jones and, and Holly home and, and that sort of stable. Um, you know, one of the best gyms in the country, no doubt. Um, but yeah, it's it's a rough one having a um, her main sort of competitor, I suppose, is what a lot of people are going to see is going to be Harrison with her judo skills and her, her ground control and stuff, which is, you know, most likely going to be Harrison. Uh, sorry, yeah, Kate, uh, Clarissa Shields' uh, yeah. weak point, um, you'd have thought, but. Who knows? It really is an interesting prospect. Um, I guess we saw Clay Collard, who's um, you know been nearly exclusively boxing for the last few years, come back to MMA and and give Anthony Pettis a really hard time a few weeks ago at uh, PFL. So who knows? Um, it really is an interesting one. Um, but they definitely need to like work their way up. Don't stick her against Harrison too soon. Um, you know, put her against some like. You know, two and one girls or three and two, you know, people with a little bit of experience, let her build um, her her confidence in the cage and let her slowly show off more and more skills and let her evolve as a mixed martial artist, not just a boxer. Yeah, it's nice that we're finally talking about PFL now because before when it was like World Series of Fighting, it just was not the same product. They've gone up a tremendous amount of levels in the production value, the fighters, the whole package. I mean, before it was like you only tuned over to see Justin Gaethje fight. You never turned <laughs> tuned over to see like every card. It has really become must watch television. They put it on Thursday nights. So it's like, there's nothing else going on fight wise <laughs> on those nights. So you actually can tune in. They're very smart in how they market it. It's been a great product. And another marketing thing we see is Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors is trying to make that growth into the United States. They're coming over to put on a show in California. They announced some fights this week. I know you're pretty excited for that title fight there. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Matthias Frederick, Frederick um, absolute specimen of a, of a fighter. Um, I can't remember who got his last win, but, you know, he... he for the sort of fighter that you might think he is, he you know he looks huge and imposing, but he's an intelligent fighter when he's in the octagon. Um, and I really expect big things from him. I think he probably could be one to venture into the UFC in the near future. I know he's a little bit um, old in the tooth now, but with the wins that he's putting together and the performances that he's putting on, I, I expect big things from him. How many wins away do you think he is from maybe getting that call from either Dana White or Scott Coker or uh, Shradi? Um, 
I don't know. I feel like maybe two big wins, if he gets like spectacular KOs that you can put on his resume, it all depends, yeah, how it goes. But he's an interesting fighter. He's, of course, got, um, I think, a speech impediment and, and um, a few other issues like that that um, somewhat limit him, but they also make him a, a very unique um, personality. Um, and I don't want to say you could market that, but you're not going to see another another fighter like that, really. Um, he seems like such a genuine good person as well. So I don't know. I think he could definitely have a future up, up in that upper echelon of, of UFC. It does make him, you know, unique in a fighter that you can get behind. He's battled through adversity. It is a good story, and the fans do like that. And we got a bunch of – we have another trilogy coming. I mean, we had the last Cage Warriors trilogy where we saw Patty Pimblet. We saw tons of excitement. We saw huge upsets. Do you think we get more of the same with this trilogy? Are there there's some fights you're excited to see on this one? I mean, of course, we haven't had most of the fights uh, announced so far, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing the I think like the culmination of the welterweight tournament. Uh, Ian Gary and Jack Grant both picked up some like incredible wins um, in uh, the last trilogy, and yeah, that is. An amazing fight as as that's one that I'm really looking out for. Ian Gary, I mean, his nickname's the future, and he truly is um, the future of MMA. That I think was he five six and zero record undefeated, um, and just such an, like an electric fighter. Um, he steps into the cage, and you just there's, there's something different. I don't want to compare him to Connor just because he's Irish, but he is one of those fighters who, not one of a kind, but there is something special about him. And Jack Grant is no uh, sort of step over at all. He's a slick submission fighter, um, a whole lo load of like nice finishes on the ground. And, and you know, it really is going to be a, a classic striker versus grappler matchup. Um, I'm super excited for that one. And we've got a few other uh, fights announced, I believe. Josh Reed, Crazy Horse, the name it goes by. He's... Um, <laughs> I think he's trading out of uh, Shaw and May with, with the likes of Jack Shaw and Brett Johns and, and Oban Elliott, that stable. So he's always an exciting fight, fight to watch. Um, yeah, I can't remember any other fights on that card. Yeah, we'll definitely have more Cage Warriors to come now that those fights are getting announced. So we'll probably have more to even talk about on that next week. But now I want to move over to, you know the Super Bowl of MMA, if you want to call it that this week, which is UFC 262. We have Michael Chandler versus Charles Oliveira. I know we both see this fight going completely different ways. How are you feeling this week? I'm feeling worse and worse and worse. I am a massive Chucky Olives fan. I love Chucky Olives. He, he's been one of my favorite fighters for a long time. That, that amazing Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, and the sort of Muay Thai striking he throws in like the crane kicks and and you know just this beautiful pressuring style and it's just oh <laughs> I really want him to be champion but the more I, I watch tape of Michael Chandler the more I, I, I start thinking into like the the strengths and weaknesses of both fighters I I'm mildly concerned I I think he's got to get out of the first round um, if he wants to be able to start imposing it. I think first round, it probably will go to Chandler. Um, oh, and I, I think would he assume so. Mm -hmm. I think That's Chandler what I've been good, saying. Good chance of getting I've... KO. Go on. Yeah, I've been saying if, if Chandler doesn't get him out early, the fight is going to start to go Oliveira's way, and he's going to start to get that groundwork. I know Michael Chandler is incredibly hard to take down, but Charles Oliveira's jiu-jitsu is so elite. I don't think he gets a submission win over Chandler. Chandler has never been submitted, to my knowledge. So that's going to be tough, but Oliveira, I mean, this is... I haven't given him much respect. I have always said he hasn't really beaten that top echelon of guys. Cause I mean, when he would beat Tony Ferguson, I don't think that was the same Tony and we'll get to that in a minute, but I have to put some respect on Oliver's name. If he wins this fight, I think this is a legitimate title fight. I know we, we all wanted to see Dustin Poirier fighting for the title. Some people wanted to see Justin Gaethje, but I do think Michael Chandler has earned this shot. I think Charles, 
Charles Oliveira has earned this shot. This is a legitimate title fight. Winner probably gets McGregor Poirier. But we have more fights even in the same uh, same division here with Tony Ferguson and uh, Darius. Darius. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's another great one. Um, well, it has potential to be great. I don't know. It really depends on what sort of Tony Ferguson shows up on the night. Um, I've got so much love for Tony Ferguson just, just from his prior performances. He's had so many just just incredible moments that you, you, you just watch him fight and you're like, no one else is going to do that. No one else will, will, will pretend to pick up sand off the, off the octagon floor and throw it at his opponent's face. He's a one of a kind fighter. He really is. I said before with Ian Gary, he seems like almost like a one of a kind. Tony Ferguson is a one of a kind. You will not see anyone else out there like him. Um, but he hasn't looked the same in his last two fights. I mean, both against really high level of competition, Geishi and of course Oliveira. Um, but the thing is, both fights he was beaten in a very different way. Uh, against Geishi, he's outstruck, and then against Oliveira, he's out wrestled. Um, that's what worries me. And, and, and Darius is such a fun fighter. Like his fight against Carlos Diego Ferreira um, was exceptional. You know, just every time um, Darius goes for a takedown, Ferreira swings for a leg lock, and it's just this constant cycle of of um, top, you know, a, a top jiu-jitsu player versus a bottom jiu-jitsu player transitioning, going back and forth. But then he can also spinning back fist and like knock you out in, in one punch. Like it's an interesting one. Darius is, is really on like a, a, a surge upwards, where it, whereas you feel like Ferguson is sli- slowly on the decline. I mean, I have- Tony Ferguson can take more damage than anybody. I mean that that Gaethje fight was crazy. I mean, Tony Ferguson, he, he just gets hit and he just stands right in the sand and just keeps throwing. <laughs> and I wonder if that's caught up to him, though. I wonder if that's really worn him down over time. And maybe that chin's not there anymore. This is going to be one of those fights that really determines the direction because we've seen Dana White said that Tony Ferguson has fought the best. All his losses have come to elite level guys and that he's right back in the mix with a win here. But another loss, and if it's another devastating loss where Tony does take a lot of damage, you have to start to think that maybe it's time for Tony to either go down a level and fight lesser skilled guys or even maybe hang up the gloves because he's got nothing left to prove. He never got that title shot, which is a shame, and he never got that matchup with Khabib just because that fight was doomed. It was just never going to happen. It was a cursed fight absolute bullshit that the fans never got to see that i'm bummed i've wanted to see that fight forever i really thought we were gonna get it finally and then boom a pandemic hits that it, it was just not meant to be i guess i mean in hindsight i am kind of glad that we didn't get it um this the, the last time that was the fifth time it was booked because that's when we've seen that tony has declined back when he was in his prime on those huge win streaks that he was racking up oh that would have been a good fight but oh, the one that got so away. Good. Yeah, I wonder if Khabib would have found a way to even take Tony Ferguson down, though. We saw Oliveira kind of dominate him a little bit. Yeah. Who knows? It's it's all what ifs in in could have been. But uh we have another title fight coming up that's gonna be in the morning uh for us here in the US uh Saturday with uh Vera versus Bueller. And this is going to be a pretty good fight. It's it's another uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy versus a wrestler, sort of. But Vera can strike with the best of them as well. He's definitely not. I wouldn't classify him as really a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy. He's a, he's a well-rounded mixed martial artist. How do you see this fight going? Because I kind of see it like this. When there's two guys that are pretty good on the ground, usually the fight kind of stays stand up and I don't like the odds of Bueller there. I know he is repping India on this card. That's supposed to bring all the, the best of India mixed martial arts together, but I do not like his odds in this one. I see Vera taking this by KO in either round one or round two. See, my thing is Vera's really getting on a bit now. He, he's no longer 
a spring chicken um, at all. So I feel like if it does turn into an absolute slugfest on the feet, uh, like we've seen so many of the, these wrestler versus wrestler, wrestler versus jiu-jitsu fighter fights go, I wonder how much his, his, his chin can take. I know people have been really high on this um, Bure. Uh, like when he first signed for one, there was a lot of um, excitement people sharing all across social media. So I don't know. It, here's a chance to, to test himself against the best and, and you know, really put um, India on the MMA map. Yeah, and there's another fight on that card that's also going to be probably putting Indy on that map with uh, Bai Nugan versus Fogat. And these are two fighters with just absolutely amazing stories. We saw um, Nugan on The Survivor, actually, and she was homeless at 22 years old, living in a gym. I mean, she's just been dedicated to mixed martial arts. She's kind of got that celebrity status, obviously, from being on the TV show Survivor. And then her opponent comes from this historic family of wrestlers. And she moved from India to Singapore to train MMA and now has gone on an undefeated run in one. And it's it's an absolute clash of two rising stars with these crazy stories. It's almost like a movie. And I, I'm not even picking who I have in this one. This is too close to call for me. I mean, not going to lie, I was nowhere near as excited for this matchup five minutes ago before you started talking you've really earned that that one <laughs> fc hat um <laughs> it's an exciting one now yeah I, i'm genuinely intrigued i've watched um by is it win or Nugan? i think I, it I'm is win sure. i think it is win you're correct yeah i'm terrible um, at pronunciations you're gonna learn that <laughs> uh, <laughs> no problem um yeah i've seen her fight quite a few times i i been impressed did she did she fight in early 2021 i'm not even certain um but she's a good little scrapper uh, and I, i'm not certain about her opponent that's why i wasn't too ex- uh, excited about this fight but if she is uh, a high level wrestler like you say this could be a really interesting test oh yeah she comes from uh i think she had a silver medalist at 23 um her family is all ben wrestlers she competed in the tokyo olympics uh, they actually made a movie about her family, which is why the card is named what it is in uh, Dengal, is because of the movie that was made about her family in Bollywood. It's it's crazy. Yeah, the card is technically named after her family. That's awesome. So they're very historic wrestlers. There'll be a billion people in India. All of India will be behind her, which is going to make it even more exciting. Yeah, and yeah, I think there's a few other Indian fighters on, on, on the undercard as well. So it's going to be really interesting to yep. see how how these Indian talents do because India is not typically a, a sport that you associate with mixed martial arts. You know, you've quite often got either the American wrestlers, the European kickboxers, um, and the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys, uh, as well as um, sort of an East Asian influence as well. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm super pumped, super intrigued more than anything. It's not one of those uh, cards like the recent sort of TNT um, run that, that has got all big names, your Eddie Alvarez's, Demetrius Johnson's, etc. Um, but it's an interesting one um, and, and, and a space where a lot of uh, young or upcoming or even unknown fighters um can, can make their name and, and, and start building a, a resume with, with one championship. And they do have an amazing uh, Muay Thai fight on there as well with a 21 year old with a, a record somehow of 124, 30 and two, which is just amazing. That is crazy. I can't wait to watch him. I haven't seen him yet. I will admit, but I am very excited to watch that kid. I saw that record. I saw his age <laughs> and I just shook my head and was like, wow, so I'm very excited to watch that one too. I'm ch- kind of just starting to get into those Muay Thai and kickboxing fights. I've always watched MMA. I've always watched boxing. I will admit I'm new to the kickboxing and Muay Thai scene, but I have been super impressed by the fights I've been watching from uh, one championship on those, and they have me totally yeah. invested. That John Wayne Parr fight um, on the last one card, that was a cracker. Um, I can't remember his opponent now, but... Um... 
it was a proper back and forth. Um, yeah. Oh, what was his name? A, a Dutch guy, wasn't he? Um, I'm not certain, but yeah, a great scrap there with, with both men going back and forth and the fight finishing in the first round. Um, so, and then they've also got uh, Rod Tang as well in there every single time. Yes, he does, so he's amazing. I see. You just see people on social media being like, "It's so, uh, time to feed." Oh, someone it was Holtz. That's who he fought. Yeah, yeah. So I think Mickey it was Austin? Australia versus uh, New Zealand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and that was, was a fight. crazy good fight. And those guys just so many accolades. I think there's like 17 world championships between the two of them, or something absurd like that. But Rod Tang, he's he's the next best thing. I I truly believe that it. You can't even blink during his fights. Ah, also, whilst on them um, talking about one's, um, I suppose, their uh, inter martial arts uh, competitions, of course, you've got Muay Thai, you've got the MMA, but then, of course, Gordon Ryan um, has been signed officially, I think he signed last year, but he's got his first fight. Well, he say fight, his grappling bout booked with grappling Shinya, match, yeah. Booked Aoki, with Shinya, yeah. Aoki. I was super excited when I first saw it because I just saw the two names and I was like, ah, that's great. But then I'm like, wait, open weight. Um, so Gordon Ryan is a natural super heavyweight, which is 225 pounds, I believe. Um, Aoki's in the lightweight <laughs> division, um, yeah. which is more like 155, 175 pounds. Uh, this isn't going to go well for Aoki. And I love Aoki. I'm a big Aoki fan. Um, just book him against Sage Northcott already. Well, he does have 30 submission wins in his mixed martial art career, so you never know that arm bar could sink in. <laughs> but I, I do, I would much rather see him go up against Sage Norcutt, especially after that hilarious eat shit comment that he made on Twitter, which was just so funny. And I, I wonder if that was just sportsmanship or if he, he really feels <laughs> that way. I think he's just selling the fight. He seems like yeah. such a nice guy. But the, the last exciting thing we have to talk about is now we do have our next round of the Bellator Light Heavyweight Grand Prix, which is going to be Rumble versus uh, Nemkov and Corey Anderson versus Bader. Are they? I don't believe they're still teammates, but I believe they're former teammates. Yeah, they spoke about training together in the past. I think Corey was on the booth. Um, was it Bellator two five seven? Um, and he, he mentioned that they have yeah they trained together, but not anymore. I see Corey potentially being a dark horse to win this whole tournament, you know. Ooh. See, just at because the beginning, I changed my pick in this tournament. But go mm. ahead. Well, just because he's got... I don't think anyone can match his level of cardio. That's one thing that Corey Anderson has always had uh, above... You know, it's his nickname is Overtime, isn't it? He's known for his cardio. He's got a super high level um, of, of wrestling. Um that I think he can probably just use to to take anyone out. I once he starts getting people down, grinding them out, and their their sort of will starts to sap. I I think he can ground and pound anyone in that tournament. I, I mean, they're all really tough fighters, and even though the fights so far have been a little bit lackluster um, at times, um, you know, it's some great fights and super high level competition. So, I mean, it could go any way. Who do you see winning it? So when the tournament was first set up, I I took Bader. And now I'm getting cold feet a little bit. I saw Nemkov in that first fight, and I saw Bader in his first fight. And, you know, Bader didn't put away Machida like I thought he would. I, it was actually a closer fight. Not close. I mean, Bader, Bader won that pretty uh, decisively. But Nemkov just, he looks so good out there. And... I just don't see anybody in this tournament stopping him. I mean, you know, he's the product of Fedor Emelianenko as his, his coach and as his big role model, and he's done him very proud. I think Bader does get past Anderson. I think it's going to be another close fight. I'm a little worried that the other fight isn't going to be close. I don't know if Rumble, with all that ring rust and, you know, age catching up with them, He's been in a lot of wars. He got arrested. I did see he did get arrested on the credit card <laughs> fraud. I think I think he'll be okay though. But that, that is uh, that was quite the news. At first, I just saw Rumble arrested, and I was like horrified. And then I yeah. looked it up, and it's 
it's not it's too deep. too serious. So I think Rumble will still definitely be in the uh, the Grand Prix. <laughs> I don't think you got to worry about that. But I am worried for him in this one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I think Nevkov, Nemkov, sorry, is just a phenom. Like people have been saying, um, Bellator's like heavyweight division is, is possibly the best in any organization right now. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think the UFC have still got some really good fighters in that division. But you know, fighters like Nemkov are the reason that people are starting to to raise that point. He is a phenom. Uh, you know, he, he is the prospect. He's the future. Um, he just looks so imposing. And, and I watched uh, a lot of his tape because I did a um, preview for his, his, his fight with Phil Hawes. Um, and, and yeah, just going over that that um, fight with, with Bader last year or the year before, um, he just looked so impressive and so comfortable in the ring with, with one of Bellator's, like, not only like one of their most experienced fighters, but one of the most active and and competitive and dominant fighters um and he just went in there and and he made it his fight for three rounds and then finished it um but i think anderson can take him down i think anderson can take anyone down <laughs> that's <laughs> true my money's, my money's going on Corey anderson there we go so that there's another one we we have a disagreement on <laughs> and i think we kind of have a disagreement on who has the best uh lightweight division but not really. So the thing is, is I think Bellator has a deeper light heavyweight division than the UFC, but the UFC has the best two fighters. One, if you want to say John Jones is a heavyweight now, which I know he is going up to heavyweight, but I still lump him in with the the light heavyweights of the UFC because if, if someone were to win that and they were a real challenge, you know John Jones would be right down there to challenge him. So I, I lean towards the UFC as the best two fighters, but I think Bellator is a little deeper. Do you really, though? Because um, I honestly, I was thinking this the other day. Look at the UFC. They've got Jan Blachowicz, Glover Teixeira, Alexander Rakic, Yuri Prokazka, um, and oh, who else is it? Tiago Santos at fifth. Um, yeah. I think they're at least equal to, to Bellator's. And outside of the Bellator's top five, outside of that, tournament i suppose apart from julius anglicus um most of their guys are like young upcomers so it's close it's close but it I is close in, with ufc and i think rackick is actually somehow underrated still i don't think we've seen the best of him yet i think he's going to improve which is kind of scary but wow he is a great kickboxer I can see him possibly becoming the champion one day in the they UFC. They need to match him up with Prokaska. Rackets That's Prokaska. I love that. Oh, that would be exciting as hell. Yeah, but, because we haven't seen Rakic sort of demonstrate that that kickboxing recently. Uh, I think he basically wrestled Anthony Smith and then fought a really weird, like ranged fight with Tiago Santos, and then got given his jiu-jitsu black belt, uh, brown belt, or whatever. At the end, we're in a fight where he did no jiu-jitsu, it was just a bizarre one, and he's sort of like taken away the hype a bit from his name. But yeah, I agree. I, I think he's he's a great fighter, but he needs an opponent like Prokaska, who who just looked incredible against Reyes two weekends ago. Um, you know, stick those together on a main event in in Poland or in London or somewhere. Uh, that would be incredible. They really did blow that last uh, fight, though. You kind of had the feeling that the winner of that was going to like be the number one contender and fight for the title. And then it was one of the most boring fights I've ever watched in my life. I was kind of glad it was just over, which is it's weird when you stack up two exciting fighters. They they had a three rounds of what appeared to be a feeling out process. Yeah, 100%. And, and Racket came away with the W, but... I would actually, yeah. I would say I would like to see it again because I don't think you would get that a second time. I think you would see a much more exciting fight and them actually going for it because they now know if you just win and you don't do anything, you're not going to get your title shot. It doesn't work that way with Dana White. I don't think so because I reckon Santos is shot. His knees are ruined. I think with um, with Jones' is like oblique kicks uh, and, and, well, just repeated punishment of his legs. Um, I think he's had knee, knee issues in the past as well. Um, and he's been matched up to fight Johnny Walker now as well. Um, oh, he's fighting yeah. Johnny Walker? 
Mm -hmm. um, which is is good. Uh, I feel like it's a fight where Walker could easily rush in and Santos could just catch him with something. But I feel like the reason that fight against Rakic was such a, a, a distance fight is because either Santos is too scared or worried to, to step forward and put pressure on his leg, end up getting kicked and have his knee blow out, or his knees already are shot and he's trying his best to like still fight even with a uh, ruined leg. So that's, that's my theory. I might be okay. wrong. I might see him come out and wheel kick Johnny Walker back to Brazil. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we do have some exciting fights. We'll have more cage warriors news for you next week. Uh, Frank, do you want to let them know where they can find you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Bernard boy. Um, all sorts of interviews, UFC MMA stuff going up there um, and on Instagram at Frank Bernardo as well. Awesome. And you can find me on Twitter at Jack Gotzel. And this was uh, the Tarps Off Sports UK MMA episode two. Thank you. We out.